Hi guys, Dr. Diller again. Let's go over the femur. Now, we just went over the ilium in the last section, so you should know which ilium is this? Or which, uh, let's be specific, which coxal bone is this? It's only half of the ilium. Okay, this is always lateral. Okay, here's your pubic tubercle. Okay, so this is the left coxal bone. Now let's bring in this doesn't fit, these are different parts, but you can see, what is this thing? Acetabulum. So this thing right here, which is called the what? It's the head of the femur. Head of the femur, all of this. That would fit right into this socket, ball and socket joint. Right? So the head of the femur fits into the acetabulum. And there we go. But let's turn that a little bit. So let's pull away this. We've covered this in the last video. Set this over here and let's go through this femur. It's not too complicated. <clears throat> now the first question is, which surface is this? So this is very smooth. So this is the anterior surface. You can also tell that uh, let's do these for quickly. What's this? Lesser trochanter. This big knob. This is all greater trochanter. All of this. Greater trochanter, greater trochanter. So, and then when you look between them, it's very smooth. Sometimes there will be a little line here called the intertrochlear line. Uh, but that's how you can tell where you are. So let's zoom in a little bit here. Alright, so it's kind of hard to see. On this specimen I couldn't pin it because it's really not there. But it would be right here. Somebody's put a pencil line on it. but So because it's these are the greater lesser trochanter intertrochanteric line. So this ball right here, that's the head of the femur. This skinny part here, that, that kind of gives rise to the ball, this is the neck of the femur. You can get femoral neck fractures. And that's really about all we can see here. This would be the shaft down here. If I turn this over a little bit, <clears throat> right where the pin is coming out, Oh no, you can see it right there. Let's see if I can raise it up towards you. Hopefully this will focus. So that's the fovea of the head of the femur. That's the that's where what goes in there that holds this to the acetabulum. Ligamentus capitis femoris would be attached right in there. Okay. Now we can while we're this way, we can also see a little cubby hole here. What's this? It's greater trochanter and the little cubby hole that is the trochanteric fossa. So there's muscles that can connect in this region. And what's this now? From this view? This would be a P to A with oblique with obliqueness in it. What's that big bump? <clears throat> That's the lesser trochanter. Now we have a little mountain range, a little lava flow coming off the lesser trochanter. That's also the pectineal line. I think it's got a number one on it. That's also a pectineal line, so you have to say pectineal line of the femur. So the last one, you should really say pectineal line of the coxal bone, just to be clear. Although I think it's kind of given that that's the pectineal line. Some books, uh, some of the big books, and the big books I use, by the way, are Drake, which I really like. That's your, that's your class book. That's been around forever. And it's pretty darn accurate. Uh, the big, supposedly the Bible has always been the Big Grays, which the last two editions have been written by Strand. I think it's her first name is Susan Strandring. Um, even though it's the 25th edition, uh, it's only her second edition. And uh, believe it or not, there are, uh, there are a lot of mistakes in that book, which. Um, not only I don't really like it, uh, but the rest of our staff doesn't really like it either. Uh, but yet we're stuck with that. It's still kind of the Bible. So Strandrink's the Bible. There's one called Sing 
that I really like. Uh, <clears throat> I think you can get the Abdomen Lower Extremity book for your iPad for about eight bucks and it is, I went through it with uh, at least pertinent to gross one and two, it's pretty darn accurate and its description of cranial nerves are incredible for eight bucks. So that guy's name is Singh. Um, so those are the big ones and then more clinical anatomy is another stable that's been around so uh, all of my knowledge comes from those big major books which are all used on both medical physical therapy and chiropractic boards so if you're wondering where all my knowledge came from that's where it came from uh, okay anyway I digress so uh, where were we pectineal line was right here pectineal line of the femur Maybe if I turn it like this, we can see it a little more. Pectineal line. And now I think we're ready to just, let's keep going on the back side. So let me zoom out. Get your bearings here. Okay, now we're on the back side, just to give you an idea where we are. Zoom in a little bit. And the first thing you can see, now some of the specimens at school these things are really prominent. If I turn it to the side you can see there's a really thick mountain range kind of a double mountain range that runs on the back. That's the linea aspera. There's actually a medial lip of the linea aspera would be here. You don't need to know that but uh, there's the lateral lip would be on the lateral part. But <clears throat> The reason I say that is because they morph into things. So let's let's follow the lateral lip actually morphs into this region. So we we remember what this is, right? This was the greater trochanter. Greater trochanter has a big mountain range that goes into the lesser trochanter. So this is the intertrochanteric, meaning it's between the trochanters. Intertrochanteric no, not the line. The line's on the front. This is the crest. The crest, I always think, crest is caboose toward the back. Crest, caboose toward the back. Then you have this big bump, kind of a little volcano here in the mountain range. Let's see if we can make that more visible. Some of them, it's really big. That's the quadrate tubercle for quadratus femoris. That's where it inserts. Quadrate tubercle. Some of the specimens, it's very prominent. Others, it's not as prominent. Quadrate tubercle. Okay, now let's go back to this this uh, lateral lip of the arcuate or lateral lip of the linea aspera comes here, and then you get a real thickening. Now it's not that thick on this specimen. You can see it here, though. So what's that? gluteal tuberosity or you can call it some authors I think our notes call it the gluteal line so either one of those gluteal tuberosity gluteus maximus it inserts its tendon in there so sometimes it's really really noticeable so look out for that one how about this cubby hole again you can see trochanteric fossa this again neck femur neck of the femur head of the femur Fovea. Okay. So let's see if we got all the parts. <clears throat> well, we talked about the. We talked about how this, the gluteal line kind of morphs into the lateral lip of the linea aspera. Now, what about the medial lip? The medial lip is coming up here. That's not good in the specimen. Here's the medial lip coming around, and it actually wraps around the back here, in this region here, right under the lesser trochanter. Uh, this is the spiral line, and on this specimen it's very subtle. The spiral line actually morphs into this line. What was this? Lesser trochanter, greater trochanter. It morphs into the less or intertrochanteric line on the back. So that's the spiral line. Pretty hard to see, but there are a couple specimens that have it, so look for it. Find, go to the P to A view, 
It's a little obliquity in it, and look underneath, and you can find or follow the medial lip, the Lenny Asper around, and you can you can find it on some of the specimens. All right, let's let's stay on the posterior side. Let's slide on down here. Let me zoom this in a little now. Okay, so we have a popliteal surface right here. And by the way, those, like this is the lateral lip. Oh, you can see it there nicely. There's the lateral lip of the Lenny Asper, but it, right about at the popliteal surface, it morphs into a new name. Let's try to get your bearings here. You can see all this? So that is the, what's that called? Supracondylar line comes off the epicondyle supercond or super yeah that's right supercondylar line if I screw up don't worry I will correct it in the actual video hopefully I won't screw up uh, and then on this side this would be the medial supercondylar line right here um, how do I know which way is medial and which way is lateral always look for this big guy here that always points to the medial side. Just like the lateral malleolus, you can always tell which what's the lateral part of the leg by that. So, all right, let's go back to this now. So, <clears throat> medial is over here. So we have a bump right here. It's not super prominent on this one. That's the adductor tubercle. Okay, and that's coming off this region of bone. So that's the medial epicondyle. All of this is medial epicondyle. Medial epicondyle. Um, it's not as easily seen over here. It's more on the posterior lateral spot. So this is the medial epicondyle. And you, if you run your hands down the inside of your thigh and fish around at your knee, you will find this uh, tubercle, which is fairly sensitive. And we saw it on the cadavers where the ductor magnus connected right into it. So, okay. Um, here we have a chicken bone here. What's all this chicken bone? So that's just the medial condyle. Medial condyle of, don't forget in the test, medial condyle of the femur. Of the femur. Lateral condyle of the femur. Okay, here's an intercondylar notch. It'd be right here, right in between them. I don't think they call it fossa. I mean, that's way too big for a fossa, but I'll correct that again if I, uh, according to Netter. I'm also using Netter, right? I forgot to say Netter. Not only do I use Gray's, but uh, Netter is like the Bible uh, when it comes to naming this stuff as well. And it's usually pretty much in sync. None of the books are perfectly in sync, though. There's always a little variation, probably 5% variation between authors, which drives me crazy. Um, okay, I think we got it. Let's, let's roll it over to the front side now. Let me back out just a little bit. So, by this appearance, you can always tell which is medial. Because this sticks out way more. It's almost like a, like a hook. You can almost hang something on that. So, what was that thing? This is the medial side. So, up out of the range, the the head of the femurs on this side. So that was the adductor tubercle. Uh, and all this region right in here is the epicondyle, right? Medial epicondyle. Now here, this surface where the spring is, and all of this, this is where the patella goes. Okay, so this is the patellar surface. This is still medial condyle now kind of chicken bone, medial condyle, medial condyle, over here, lateral condyle. Not much exciting going on here, you can't really see, everything's pretty smooth, so um, that's about all you need to know there. <coughs> Let's uh, bring this guy in real quick. We can zoom a little more. 
Hopefully this will focus nicely for us. So here we have the patella. Okay, here's the superior surface. Here's the inferior surface. And this little point here, that's the apex of the patella. This is the base of the patella. All right, let's pull it off. Now, how do I know, <clears throat> if I throw this, well, let's, let's do the anatomy first. Okay, now let's flip it over. So the side with the P on it, these are articular facets. This is the lateral and medial articular facets. You can call them articular surfaces, it's fine with me. Um, but they articulate with the tibia and fibula, or the <clears throat> femur and the tibia. So this one is always longer, and it's always lateral. So all of this is long. It's like a, if you're skiing, here's the top of the mountain, and you ski down this long slope. Long is lateral. L for lateral. And this steeper, it's not as long, uh, but it's more advanced skiing here. It's a little steeper groove, and it's shorter. So that's medial. So if I throw this on the table and say, which patella is this? Look for the apex, so you know that's down, the base is up, and it always, because the longer surface is also heavier, longer, lateral, heavier, this is the lateral side, medial side, so this has got to be the left patella. Make sure you know that, because I like to throw this out there on the table. Got it? Okay.